I think I've got a new favourite pointy mountain, folks. It looks amazing. I'm going to walk up that hill today and we're going to talk about focus track. I'm going to show you how to use it, but also how to apply some filmmaking finesse to really get the most out of this incredible technology. Be sure to watch the video to the end because we're going to learn a super special pro technique to get ultra smooth point of interest shots like this and spotlight shots like this. Before we get into a deep dive analysis of all the various focus track options, you want to know the secret to better focus track shots? Well, this is it. Begin with the end in mind. Why are you even doing that shot? Focus track introduces movement and movement is great. It's one of the five pillars of great aerial cinematography. However, is it motivated? Is there a reason for that? Are you revealing new parts of the frame? With these intelligent flight modes, you can create some really great moves and motion for the sake of motion can look good. However, if you really want to take things to the next level, give that motion a purpose. Use it to introduce new parts of your composition, help tell your story. Let's go join me on the hill and as we talk through these various focus track options, I want you to think about how you would begin your shot with the end in mind. If you were in my situation, trying to tell this little story of going on a hill walk. My little story today is walking up that hill or mountain as far as I'm concerned. Now, I'm not showing you that just now. It's for a reason. I want to reveal it as I walk through the frame. I'm going to use Focus Track's Spotlight to help me do that. So we select the subject. In this case, it's me, the person. Spotlight is already selected. I now have a kind of automated third person or second person controlling this drone on my behalf. It's absolutely fantastic. Now, watch this. Hopefully, the drone is following me. Or well, the camera is following me, I should say. It's rotating round. I'm walking in the direction of this mountain and hopefully it's revealed it. Don't want to look at my controller just yet because that can spoil the mood of the shot. But you can put the controller in your pocket if you want, if you want once you get comfortable with these things. Now the other cool thing you can do with Spotlight, you'll notice that the camera's still tracking me. I'll just return to the path. But you can add in your own movement as well. Now again, what we're trying to do with this shot, let's say the purpose was to reveal where I've come from. So I want to reveal down there. I'll take the drone up a little bit so we don't fly into any hills because there's no sideways obstacle avoidance on this. I want to fly the drone around this way and it's going to reveal where I've just come from. The sun is up there. If you're really getting into this, you're thinking about where the sun is, how the light impacts your shot and your exposure and all that kind of stuff because we're using manual exposure, but they're topics for a different day. I'm going to put this in cine mode so it doesn't fly too fast. Take it up a little bit more so I can get comfortable that I'm not going to crash into anything. And again, beginning with the end in mind, it's going to rotate around here. The camera's pointed down at me, which normally I don't really like. I like to see where I'm going, but the view that I want to show you is down there. So let's give that a go. Controller's in the hand. I need to push right on the right stick. Trying not to look at the drone is very difficult, but I'm looking up out the corner of my eyes. Okay, that's as far as I can go before I hit something. Lovely. How did that go? Well, I think it might have gone quite well. The only thing is, I don't know if it happened in this example, but sometimes things can get a little bit shaky when you're moving. It's tracking you while you move. So I'm going to show you a real pro tip here. Pro tip. Check this out. Instead of tracking you as a subject, we're going to go into point of interest for our rotations and track a point on the ground. This is a really, really cool tip. And it's almost like a hack that does away with the risk of jumpy movement while it's trying to track you. Wow, the wind has really got up a bit now. Let me just turn around and block the sun so I can see where I want to make my tracking point. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so just double check focus where we want to be. Instead of drawing the box around me, which it won't actually grab now because I'm too far away, we draw a box around a point on the ground. Lovely jubbly, there we go. It's going to track around that point. We'll now set a point of interest to go to the drone's left. And again, beginning with the end in mind, what's going to happen here is going to loop all the way around and it should reveal this mountain again, but without relying on me. My motion shouldn't make it all jerky. Anyway, you get the idea, right? Let's just put that point of interest in again. Go. 
quick check I've set it off in the right direction, which I have. Okay, I'm going to get going. It looks like I could drop out the frame. I'm not sure. Sometimes there's a bit of trial and error. I like to lead people to believe that I run up these hills. Far from it. Far from it. I'm going to do a quick check on the controller. Right, I think that's enough of that. Stop that. Yeah, good. Just in time. Woo! Using point of interest but selecting a motionless part of the frame and then having me pass through the frame has quickly become my favourite way of using focus track. In these examples I could have selected myself as the subject but first of all it might have resulted in jumpy motion from the drone and second of all by selecting the ground it allows me to pass through the frame. If I start off in the shot the viewer is watching me but if I leave the frame the viewer's eye transfers to the background so the eyes pulled through the frame and it makes it a much more immersive experience. The other benefit of this approach if you look at this car example is there's no way the focus track would identify that car there, it's too small. It does however allow me to select a portion of the landscape and it gives me the opportunity to do these huge rotations. Again it allows us to have that car pass into the frame. As the car comes in the eyes transfer to the car and it just creates this much more immersive experience. We then reveal the mountains in the background thanks to the motion of that drone. So the motion has purpose. We started this shot with the end in mind. The goal being to reveal those mountains after the viewer's eye had been following that car. Double check focus on myself and we'll give active track a go. Select the subject, it's me of course, hit active track and we have two options, trace and parallel. Trace is just going to follow me behind or in front. Parallel, it goes off to the side. Now I want to just follow me as I'm walking up this hill and it does a beautiful job of that. So I'll just give you a quick demonstration of that. Because we have forward facing obstacle avoidance sensors, we don't need to be so worried with collisions as we are with rotations. I think I've hit something about three times now doing point of interest or something similar. I can hear the wind behind me. Is it a little bit jumpy or is it quite smooth? You can get mixed results with this. You can also input movement of your own, which can be nice. So I can hit left on the, on the, on the right stick and we reveal that mountain a little bit. Again, beginning with the end of mind, trying not to fly into the grass and I can go right. So you can have a lot of fun with that. Really good mode. Active track trace puts in a buttery smooth performance when it comes to following cars. Look at the distance the car has traveled here. This is speeded up eight times and there's some serious distance between the drone and the car itself and it's still tracking beautifully. This is active track trace, but the drone started off in front of the car, so we get this rotation for free, if you like, as the drone repositions itself behind the car. Also, as we'll see in a second, the subject, or the car in this case, doesn't have to be locked in the center of the frame. You can recompose your shot now with active track. You can also go straight into parallel mode, which will follow me off to the side. Okay, we'll go with this. Looking quite good. Ooh, wind's giving it a bit of trouble now. Again, the sun's right up there. I should have nice balanced exposures. So we'll go up this hill a little bit further. I'll put the controller in the other hand. So it's not so obvious. So you can have more focused on my exciting photography filmmaking adventure with the camera in my right hand. Again, if you get confident, you can put the controller in your pocket. It's doing a good job. It's going up. Oh, that's it's shooting back now. It sensed something. Really cool shots. I like that. I don't really like having the subject always locked in the center of the frame. We want to think about our compositions, we want some rule of thirds and all that kind of stuff. I also don't like having the camera always pointed down at the subject. So look, I can reposition the subject within the frame. This is a really big development for me, a really big development. So let's put me in the lower left third. We're kind of tilted up there at the mountain. It's getting gusty now, people. Woo! Now it should follow me, should keep me roughly speaking in the lower left third with a view of where we're going. And there we have a slightly better framed shot. Funny story, uh, that's not the hill that I'm climbing. Can't say I'm disappointed. Uh, that's the hill that I'm climbing, which looks a lot more like the description I was promised. <laughs> Good news, see you at the top. One thing that's become quite apparent with the Mini 3 Pro Active Track is that you need to be quite close, certainly when you're shooting people, to set it up. So let me try a little bit further away, see if I can pick me. 
I don't know, it got me. Okay, not that close, but sometimes, sometimes it gets a little bit awkward to select the subject. I've just completely contradicted everything I said. I guess it's absolutely fine. Okay, I want to do a huge rotation. I'm in this expansive place. There's nothing I can crash into sideways. That's great. I'm going to do that point of interest trick again, but without picking me as a subject. So I'm going to deselect me. Right, we'll go with that. It's high enough. Definitely nothing it can collide with. Off it goes. One thing I want to talk to you about is ND filters. When you're doing these huge rotations, there can be a lot of movement around the periphery of the frame. That can be good if you've got ND filters because you get motion blur, but if you don't, you can see a lot of jagginess when you're doing these really fast rotations like the one I'm doing now. That's one of the reasons why I'm doing it quite far away from me, not close up to me, because the closer it is to me, the faster that rotation is, the more of that ugly jagginess. I don't have ND filters for this Mini 3 Pro at the moment, but I would be using them if I had the choice. I haven't seen the view yet, but I'm told it's incredible. So I'm just going to fly straight up for this one and reveal what's on the other side. Let's do this next one on a two times zoom, see if we can get some parallax, a bit more depth and dimension. Up it goes. People, this is, <laughs> this is out of this world. I'm going to do a spotlight shot to reveal this location. As I walk up these stones, the camera should turn around and reveal where I, where I am situated. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable. There's not enough words in the dictionary. Not enough superlatives. Up these stones we go. Hopefully it's turning around and you're getting a look at where I am. I'm in paradise. I'll stop here. Not getting too close to the edge, that's for sure. Back to my favorite point of interest trick. We've selected a point on the ground, an inanimate point on the ground, rotating the drone off to the right. As we curve around to the right, we're revealing more of the depth in the frame. We see those mountains, that was part of the strategy, but there's more to this shot. I enter into the frame. This is possible because the drone is not tracking me, it's tracking the ground. Now, as I move in towards the center of the frame, we're looking at the background, we're looking at me. There's so much depth, there's so much interest, and it's thanks to the motion of that point of interest. Another very cool spotlight move is to start off quite close like I am now. I'm just going to compose the shot over to the side like this. And then I will slowly raise the level of the shot, raise the height of the drone, and it will show down this. Oh, once I'm finished filming, I'm just gonna sit here and take this in with my eyes. I can't believe it. Much like point of interest, when we select a human as a subject, the software knows it's looking for the human form. Now that can confuse things a little bit. Here I'm sitting on a rock. It's not particularly obvious that I'm a human shape to the software and it's doing its best, but it's kind of alternating between me and just a, a point on the ground and it results in a slightly shaky outcome. In this example, it just loses me the subject altogether. So for spotlight mode, why don't we do that cool point of interest trick where instead of selecting me as the subject, we select an inanimate point on the ground, use that as our locked off point of interest, if you like, our locked off focus. And then when we input movement in the controller, we don't really have that issue of the software second guessing where the subject is and we get a much smoother result and pretty spectacular outcomes.
Right, oh, folks, I think we'll leave it at that for today. Key takeaway, begin with the end in mind. This is the same whether you're filming with a ground camera, a mobile phone, drone, doesn't really matter. Why are you doing that shot in the first place? At least just have a think about it and start to train your mind to give that some consideration before you even press record. Don't forget to check out all the freebies down below in our fantastic 8-hour drone cinematography masterclass if you really want to get into this, and we will see you next time.